Williams with no regard for human life. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up for the layup. Oh, blocked by James. LeBron James with the rejection. Irving and Curry, one-on-one. -on -one. Irving puts it up. It's good. Kyrie Irving from downtown. And the Cavaliers by three. Shot clock is down to five. Bryant goes to work. Bryant the drive. Oh! Inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win it! They win it! What up, y'all? Get ready for another live episode of the best NBA podcast you ever heard. Internet is undefeated. And with yours truly, Clutchville NBA, the at Clutchville NBA, don't you ever forget it. And the airhead commentator. Say what up, what up, what up? What up? What up, and family? Maddox 730 on deck. Gang, gang, basketball, gang. <laughs> Ball is life. You already know what time it is. And we got another jam-packed one. The NBA, it feels like a brand new league every week, doesn't it, guys? It sure does. Things change every hour. Like, Heck yeah. Almost literally out here. Um, we, we got a lot of hot topics, but... It's, it's probably not going to surprise you guys where we start off with here today. And a household name for sure, household team, and how they're on a new way for sure. The Cleveland Cavaliers, for about the 15th time this season, they look like a, a completely different team again, guys. What's, what's going on with these guys the latest? Another shakeup. So for Cleveland, Cleveland Cavaliers coach Tyron Liu has uh, stepped away from the team, citing uh, health issues. Um, so there's a lot of speculation, a lot of talks around that. We posted up a video on, mm. on our 730 radio page. Um, so myself, I'm thinking the day before that, that this announcement had taken place, Tyron Lou and LeBron, they caught him on video arguing with each other. And then mid game. Yeah. Mid game. So we know LeBron has a pattern and, you know, it, it could very well be the reason why Tyron left, or it could be a health issue. I mean, what do you guys think? I think, um, you know, I'm going to give LeBron James his props ever since he became the new coach. Um, I think they have on a winning streak. Uh, also, it's kind of weird that they added Kevin Love the uh, the same day or the next day that the uh, – Tyron Lue calls, calls it quits. and Yeah, let's let's give him that timeline. I, I'm pretty sure the next day after they announced, um, there was the fight mid-game. The next morning, it was announced that Tyron Lue was not going to be with the team due to health reasons. And that same evening, if I'm not mistaken, it was announced that Kevin Love was coming back to the lineup and returning for the Cavs that night. Yeah, oh. so what do you think that's about? Because I was thinking the same thing. So Tyron Lue left. And now Kevin Love came back. I, don't, I mean, and I wasn't expecting Kevin Love's comeback for a, a while. I mean, I haven't heard anything about Kevin Love returning. And all of a sudden, poof, he's back on the lineup. And, well, know, they weren't keeping us up to, you know, like if you were probably a diehard Cavs head, you might have been on their, their Twitter enough to, to hear something a, a couple of days ahead of time. But I do believe Kevin Love's return was just, just slightly ahead. And I mean, like less than a week ahead of what his original uh, return date was. Just that, you know, with the Cavs playing the way they were and slipping and stuff, we just kept saying Kevin Love will be coming back, but nobody was really talking about when. Right. And everybody's saying, you know, he's ill. I just think he's sick of LeBron James and all of his uh, antics and uh, nonsense. What do you guys think? Well, you know, that's uh, – I like, I like the fact that, you know, people want to try to see more – than with the service of what's going on. But but let's be honest, we're, it's a heavy, heavy speculation to say that even though, you know, this coach has left for really unsighted reasons, they haven't given us anything as to, uh, to my knowledge, what is actually making this guy sick um, to be leaving the team like that, you know? Um, but to take his sickness and say, you know, he's probably just tired of the way things are running there, you, that would be the way that you'd have to do something like that if that was true. So I don't want to sound naive here. I just don't want to jump the gun either. You know what I mean? This is a team that everybody everybody expects to go to the finals. 
and has the best player, quote unquote, in the world. So, you know, Theron Lou, what, do, do we really think that he hates coaching for the Cavs, you know, enough to walk away or lie and make up an illness and walk away? That's something I, I you know, I got to actually really think about, you know, because that's, that's heavy. This everybody, is what he does for a living. Everybody says LeBron is the coach. He's probably tired of that. And at the same time, when everybody's saying that, and then on live television, a live televised game, you're, you know, yelling at your coach in front of the whole team. You know, he feels like he's probably losing, you know, all the respect from his teammates. And at the same time, Airhead commentator, you know, believed that the soup was actually thrown from J.R. Smith to Tyron Lu. Okay. Okay. Let me jump in, guys. You have to remember, this. there's a pattern. Okay, so with this Cleveland Cavaliers team, just from the 2017-18 year, there's already been major shakeups. So there's been a whole team basically traded off the Cavs to to totally totally new team. Then you have J.R. Smith throwing soup at a coach who they said was an assistant coach, but I do honestly think it was Tyron Lue. But that's just something that I think. And the only reason why I think that is because look at what's happening now on the timeline. He got suspended for a game. He's now arguing with LeBron. Now he's out of a job. So it could be all coincidental or he could really have a health issue. Now, mind you, people with health issues kind of have a pattern. You know, they're either they're out for a while. They come back. They're this, they're that. However, People fight battles privately. So he very well could have some type of health issue that we're not aware of. That very he true. make people aware of. Now, you're going to hear first from us or from me, myself, Maddox730. Catch me on Twitter. And um, you will see there that I put Tyron Lue will not return to the Cleveland Cavaliers until LeBron leaves this free agency. I don't think LeBron's leaving, though. Guaranteed. I don't think LeBron. He's on a leave All of right. absence, but he will you not come it. back until LeBron is either me or, or LeBron. And, uh, you know, you know how when you want to attract free agents and you want your business to keep prospering, you might put these things under the table and not get, let it go public. You know, so I agree with the airhead commentator that he did get the chicken noodle or the clam chowder. <laughs> um, and he won't return until LeBron James with the exceeded hairline uh uh, uh never mind <laughs> yes let's, <laughs> i mean we could all sit here and speculate what's really going on obviously there's something going on with the Cavs. there's been too many things going on there's a this is the first year that we're seeing a lot of losses this is something that really wasn't expected could it be the Kyrie effect could it be Kyrie leaving putting stress on the team you know Kyrie was a big part of the team i don't care what anyone says Kyrie did a lot for last year's playoffs and even the finals, a lot. And a lot of those games would not have been won if Kyrie wasn't on the team. So now that that Kyrie is not on the team, a lot of people have to step up. They have to be more of a role player in each role, get good at a lot of things. And it's just not working out right now. They just need to find their rhythm. Well, we're still talking like, you know, the past uh, notion because – since this guy Kevin Love returned, which it's only it's a very small sample source, we have to lead off yes. by saying that um, it's what I think it's two games he's been back it for. It is two games. We he, saw him, we saw him limping in the same. In the second game, he was limping at the end. However, he has had two great night games, phenomenal with high double game. digits, and you know, well, not I mean, just not just the stats. If you watch the games, first of all, he hit the game winning shot one game. Okay. Yep. Um, LeBron kicked it to him for a game-winning three-pointer in the corner against, who was that, Toronto? Um, yep, and LeBron I, said he can always rely on Kevin Love. It's true. Yeah. I thought that once Kevin Love came back into the equation that they could do damage. It's very true. But then you have LeBron out here publicly saying, I miss playing with another All-Star. Like, I, to me, I don't think that was professional of him at all because then that's just discrediting the rest of your team. You have a whole team behind you who's trying to put in work, who's trying to make these, 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 win these games, and then you're out here basically crapping on them saying you miss playing with an All-Star. So, I mean, what's the culture there? I'm not sure. Let's think, you know, I know, you know what? We I'm interrupted really glad you Clutch said- Phil. We, you know, I'm going to let you go real quick. But just think about 
why Kyrie Irving wanted to get out of that situation. Okay, go ahead. Bro. A great add in. I really exactly that's what should be embedded in the back of people's minds. But I'm really glad that you brought that up because I thought to myself, it, it's strange how comfortable this guy is when it comes to speaking about his teammates and and what they give him. Um, you you're really right. It does really give the notion that he doesn't really appreciate what these guys that are there are doing. But I don't know. It all depends on what your relationship with your people are. Are you know there's there's got to be people who think that they're safe. When it comes to like, oh, LeBron ain't gonna get me traded, whether it's accurate or not, Jr. Corver, whoever you think you are, you know, I I don't know, but it's all about the relationships you have with the people that you know how they treat you, and I think LeBron treats these guys probably a certain way. I don't know if it's through money or you know the lifestyle or whatever it may be, to where they still feel loyal to him, even though he says these type of stuff out there in the media. Right. I just don't agree with the way he came out saying that because I'm not, you know, you have these kids as far as Jordan Clarkson, not kids, but, you know, younger than him, Jordan Clarkson, uh, Larry Nance Jr., Hill, you know, you have these people on this team who clearly are coming to work every day, wanting to play, wanting to win, but then they're just not getting, you know, the shine that they I personally, get or deserve. I personally think it's not easy playing with this guy. Kyrie left for a reason, Isaiah, Jay Crowder, and even Wade got traded over, you know, a lot of drama supposedly going on and, uh, you know, unnecessary uh, drama right. in the locker room. I mean, and this is where the question is, what is the culture there? You know, so it's all, it could all be he said, she said, everyone will have a different opinion, you know. Yep. So, I mean, there's really nothing that we can say concretely what's going on unless they come out saying it. But again, And that's how- why... And that's why we're going to fo- uh, flow it right into this this next topic of the injury reports. Not only did the Cavs get, you know, somebody vital back, Kevin Love, to really strengthen their roster, um, a lot of NBA teams actually had the opposite happen. They lost another superstar. You had the Warriors in the same time span um, have a broken thumb happen to, to Clay Thompson and lose Draymond Green to a, an aggravated shoulder injury that he's been dealing with back and forth on and off. And as we already know, KD and Steph out, bruised ribs, sprained ankle, um, respectively. Not to mention Boston, um, you know, still riddled with crazy amounts of inj- injuries and still managing to... Who, who, did they? Yeah, I mean, beat top-level teams. It's, it's slipping my mind right now. Who did they just beat the other night? The top-level uh, Eastern uh, Conference team? OKC. OKC, OKC Western beat. Conference team. And, they just and- put the thunder. Yes, and I just and I was telling Maddox, you know, th- this team has a lot of injuries. You know, Jalen Brown is out, Kyrie Irving is out, um, Smart. Smart is out, right? And yes, they may play against these teams, but and it may be neck and neck the whole game, but they still pull out that win, which means they're really playing hard. They're really playing, going that extra mile against these hard, these big name teams, and they're still winning. Well, so and we yo, definitely got to give them credit. Shout out to some of the best rookies I've ever witnessed in my life. Terry Rozier playing out of his mind. Uh, Jason Tatum still making a bout for, you know, rookie of the year voting. Um, yep. And then, you know, other guys just stepping up. Even little Morris, Shane Larkin. And, and, Morris and, and, is an animal. Oh, Marcus Morris. Talk about game-winning shots. How can I not mention that guy? Yeah, yeah. And they that came, was, you know, they terrible. lost by one point against the Wizards. And uh, it was, you know. They could have won the game. Which is why I also think, to be honest, I feel Kyrie went there. He's very humble. Kyrie is very humble. And I feel he took this team and he really developed this team so that they wouldn't rely on just him. I feel like Kyrie is the type that he can develop a team and develop a player that they that brings the good out of them, the best out of them, and they could win these teams. And that these brings teams. me to the topic, not you know, to go back to LeBron. Who this year, t- show us in your in the comments, has LeBron James made better? Because I can answer who Kyrie made better this year. I can answer who James Harden made better this year. But who has LeBron made better this year, first half, second half of the season? I haven't found an answer yet. Yeah, that's, that's you know, definitely going to be uh, interesting in the comments here to see what, what people are saying. I got my takes on it, but uh, I want to hear see what the rest of the world has got to say, and we're going to get into that some more in our next episodes to come, um, especially as LeBron preps a brand-new 
pretty much squad of uh, relatively exactly. young this guys. Would, this would be the time to prove me wrong. Yep, With this, this squad right be, here. This would be these the guys time. are hungry, and I think they deserve, you know, to get the taste of a winning culture. Oh, I just feel like right now it's probably LeBron and Kevin Love's ear. Like, it's just going to be me and you, brother. We're going to have to just take this team and ride it out. <laughs> But I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they got some names there that should be able to contribute. And in, well, you got to remember cool now, ways. Larry Nance is out. He's injured. So, He's yeah, Larry Nance is out right now. Larry Nance is out, but I expect shooting from George Hill. I expect shooting from Jordan Clarkson and playmaking. And I expect JR to not be in the single digits. Like, come on, man. And, Rod on? and Rodney Hood. Listen, JR Well, he's also, is he back? He's been injured as well. Listen, Rodney Hood is out. Tristan out. Thompson is out. Out. Osmond is out. And Osmond was a good um, oh, rookie Seti that they were Osmond. playing. Damn, yeah, that's yeah, why they was... probably, that's probably, probably why they rushed Kevin Love back. Kyle Korver is out. Well, that's a family um, uh, emergency. You yeah, know, shout out, family uh, emergency. Condolences to, to Kyle. Kyle Corver lost his brother. Yes, sir. And um, Akara White is out. Well, he's just signing a ten-day Cavalier to contract anyway. But the whole point of the the whole thing is is Jr's on his way out. I don't think they're gonna. I, I they may release him. To be honest, <laughs> you know he has deteriorated this year. Uh, you know. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I think that his gameplay has deteriorated. I'm, I'm going to let you finish before I, I, I stick up for my boy. Sure. Um, which is funny because I was saying Jared was good. A couple of uh, podcasts ago, I was think I was saying that Jared was good and you were trying to shit on him. But I'll be interested to hear what you say. No, I think but anyway, he has one good game and then six bad games. I think his gameplay this year has deteriorated. And I really think last year he was way better. This year he has an attitude problem. He's throwing soup at people. I mean, who's going to really deal with that? I And I think it all ties into just not being happy on a team. Remember, he was benched for Wade. There was a problem. People, you know, was upset. Then Wade got benched and JR came back. So it very well could be feelings, <laughs> ego. You know, you, you threw out some good stuff. JR, I don't think you're far off at all. I think it's just a, a tad off in the perception is that, you know, he, just as easy as it is for him to go south when the energy is right, i.e. coming to New York with Carmelo Anthony, new fresh start. You got a, a leading scorer in the NBA doing the damn thing. What was JR Smith? He was sixth man of the year. He was leading the NBA in scoring off the bench. He had You're an right. Incredible... How long ago, though? He, Come on. Well, he also, hold on, I'm telling a timeline. He also, then, next thing you know, he throws an elbow in the playoffs. The Knicks don't win another game after that, and he ends up getting traded. Now, what do you know? Another team believes in him, and he goes seven for seven from downtown, one game in the finals, and ends up being a huge role player for LeBron James-led team. So I let's not said... act like... Listen, I never said JR sucks. I said his gameplay is deteriorating. That's all well, I said. You, well, that makes it sound like his market value is dropping, which to me, his value to a team that's trying to win a championship is the same. Now, my points earlier oh, in the man. podcast about JR, well, you, I'm going to let you finish. My, my points earlier resonate with this. He's a Mr. Hot and Cold. I argued that D Wade would be able to give more experience wise consistently in the playoffs than jr um exactly. has been demonstrating. All, i could agree on that would you rather That's... somebody would you rather somebody to be consistent or hot and cold and you don't know what to expect exactly and that's what he is now i think when Time he's out. on he's crazy mm -hmm. hot so you're right he could be but, good but, he, but... His, his decision making and his gameplay style he needs it ties in with maddox points to let y'all go that if LeBron was bringing the right energy, the Kyrie type of flow, if JR played with Kyrie in Boston, he would definitely be averaging 20 a night. Okay, understood. But let's look at look, let's look at him. And I'm not saying that he's a sucky player because I was a JR Smith fan saying JR Smith's good, JR Smith's not getting traded. We just spoke about it when the trade deadline happened. And I was telling y'all, JR Smith's got not getting traded. LeBron loves JR Smith. And I said they couldn't find nobody to trade him to because nobody wanted him. However, the last game they just played against the Milwaukee Bucks, yes, the Cavaliers did win. However, J.R. Smith had five points and played 23 minutes. Now, the game before that, 
Clutch stats. The game before that, they played against the Raptors. Yes, they won. His team, his score, ten. The game before that, against let's see. Mm-mm. A game for that was the Bulls. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what he did. Five. 22 minutes. And he's a shooting guard. The game before that. And <laughs> remember, guys, he's coming on the starting lineup. So it's not like he's coming off of the bench. Okay. He was crying. So when now. He was off the line, starting lineup. The when... Trailblazers, the game before that, 315. The Cavaliers lost 105 to 113. Smith had three points. He played 27 minutes. No. So when I say that his <laughs> gameplay is deteriorating, I don't think that I'm wrong. I do think that he's capable of way better gameplay because I've seen it. Um, but let's go one step, fa- a step further. They played the Suns. It was 129-107. Yes, they won. Okay, he had 14 points. That was back in... That was the beginning, March 13th. So not that far back. After the trades, Tyron Lou said in the interview he said we don't want to give up on jr smith you know that that tells me right there the game before that they played the lakers he he played 23 minutes scored three points so i understand that we want to be an advocate for this guy i get it before that he had 15 so he's hot and then he's very cold he could be going you know he's going he's through some hot. struggles he has one good game 10 bad games after. Yes, because he scored six so he prior might have to that. 10 good games in the whole year. It's just not working for him right now. He's going through All right, some this troubles. is this is a down year for him, and yes. he's definitely on some lows. I'm, I'm co-signing the current. See, but regular season, if you ask LeBron James about the regular season, he'll laugh and say, it doesn't matter. My real question is, will, do you think JR is going to show up for LeBron in the playoffs? He has if to. he can't do it in the regular Okay, and this is my question, and it's an honest question, and I'm not even trying to beef. Even, the, you know, I want to hear it in the comments, too. Why is someone so lax during the regular season when they should be, you know, gearing up for the playoff season and to win a team? You know, it's you really funny lax. you say this. You can't be lax during the regular season and expect to get to the playoffs. I, I fully I fully resonate with that. that. I don't, I don't believe that. in taking a possession off. You know, if you play in the playground with me, I'm going to be pissed at you if you take a possession off, even if we're up 15. Now, mm-hmm. with that being said, you know, these guys, we've brought up in a lot of episodes, wear and tear, degradation of the body, being ruined by coaches, and, and injuring yourself as a result of that. We've brought up all these topics. So, it's you know, we can't act like that there's not reasons why players pace themselves, why Greg Popovich sits the entire healthy starting, you know, five sometimes when he feels like it, right? So, Understood. But know, there's th- that's the type of reasons why somebody might not go full throttle, especially if your team already has the one or the two seed locked up. People said the Warriors were crazy playing hard for 73 wins. And then, look, they ended up not having enough gas in the tank to finish up. Understood. And we, we didn't even touch, you know, with the Warriors, you know, that they're actually exercising the new rule pretty good. You know, it's a coincidence that pretty much all the start starter players are not, you know, playing right now. Before we get into that real quick, though, just to go back into your point of people pacing themselves, he mm-hmm. only plays 20-something minutes. So he's not even playing whole games. He should be very well – J.R. Smith I'm talking about. He should well, be very well – well, when no, no, it, it all it starts at the top, like you know, a company, and it trickles down. If your team is, you know, if everybody knows that LeBron James is coasting, which we, you know, started a, a, maybe I think our first or second episode talking about with the losing twelve of eighteen games, was LeBron James even trying at times during that stretch? So you know, it looked like he was coasting. He plays a lot of minutes and wears himself, so everybody knows he's, you know, on cruise control, for lack of a better term, right now, and. They're not going full throttle, and they're already losing a bunch of games. Do you think that something like that is going to have an effect on Jr. or anybody on the team's production? Because everybody was having down numbers before the trade. True or false? Exactly. But shouldn't these, you know, 
J.R. Smith be a player that LeBron makes better? You know how everyone says LeBron makes everybody better? I, I just made the case that LeBron was coasting and his performance was suffering. And, and he says the regular season doesn't matter. Do you think that trickles down to everyone on the team? And their game plan is, is making them look look bad. Well, attitude is everything. So if you have exactly. someone who is, you know, if you have someone who is blowing games and not really playing yep. as, you know, playing as hard, then yep. yeah, that's gonna make everyone else, you know, the same way. Attitude is Thanks contagious. For it, totally. That's, that's keeping it one hundred. You know what I mean? Totally agree. But you know, in Jair's case, I would shave him right off the team. <laughs> If he listen, he has no respect. If he's coming to the point where he's playing five, 23, 25 minutes each game, he's scoring three to five points on average, and you're throwing soup at somebody, shave his ass right off. No, I, listen, like Tyrone, I can't argue with that. Tyron Lue, Tyron Lue is sick of LeBron James and J, people like J.R. Smith. You know, it's probably hard to hold down a locker room when you got people, you know, like that not even respecting you. By yeah, the way, guys, like you're the scum of the earth, and you you have no say. By the way, guys, just to to finish up the uh, the injury report here, we got players like uh, you know that don't matter trying to come in and back out of lineups like Aaron Gordon for the Orlando Magic, Jabari Parker return for the Milwaukee Bucks, strengthening another Eastern Conference playoff team. Um, the Washington Wizards have uh, updated their timetable for John Wall. Kyrie Irving is going to a second. A uh, doctor outside of the team for a second opinion on whether he should get the screws removed from his knee. Um, there's there's quite a bit going on with a lot of the teams. The Sixers are still hiding Markel Fultz on the uh, uh, process that Maddox. He's never you know, coming back. He's not playing this year. We should ever report on him. He ain't playing this year. Just know he's well, out for the rest of the year. Well, we we mentioned him, you know, just because. They're doing the, the Ben Simmons thing. It's going to tie in with our second-year rookie debate, you know, when we do bring that back up and how the Sixers are really t- taking advantage of the situation, boy, let me tell you. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't knock it because they're not breaking any rules. But, but the Sixers uh, are doing pretty surprisingly well. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what the Sixers – the Sixers may be in the playoffs, guys. They are going to be in the playoffs. And, yeah, they're, um, def- they're definitely a playoff squad. They're actually the four seed right now. One. What you mean? What you mean is that the Seventy Sixers might send uh, Cleveland home in the first round. That's Thing actually. Is, yeah. Is this year surprisingly the Eastern Conference is stacked? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Most people may not realize it, but more teams in the Eastern Conference have. A uh, oh no, the winning record battle is close for both conferences. The 10 seed in the West, the Clippers are five games over 500, and the eighth seed in the East is three three games over 500. Our eighth, our nine and 10 seed, our are under 500. So you know the Eastern Conference, outside of the playoff teams, still has a ways to go. Yes, but there's a lot of competition in the. Which is why, you know, this year is very exciting. This year is very exciting because at, at the end of the day right now, I, I don't know who the hell is going to take it for either conference because it's just so close. You never know. You have teams that are beating big name teams that you didn't think were going to beat the teams that are beating the teams. So this year is a very exciting year. Like the Lakers, man. I just, before we move on, I just want to shout them out really quick. They weren't in my, you know, shout outs and flops at the halfway all star point, but they continue to just really impress me. Even when they lose, it's a battle, it's a close game. They just lost by three points against the Pelicans tonight, and they've beaten, I mean, amazing teams all year long and uh, with a lot of injuries at the same time and trades going on. So definitely props to those young cats, Kuzma, Randall, um, you know, Caldwell Pope, Lonzo Ball, all getting the job done. Even uh, Brooke Lopez stepping out and showing some range. Brooke um, Lopez, they- what a center he is. He is going to be uh, – he's good. He's good. He's good for everything. Blacks, he's good for three points. He's good for rebounds. He's good for everything. I mean, you know, not for nothing. He uh that's what he did a lot of in Brooklyn, man. He was he was really a cornerstone for the Nets and it's good to see him returning to all-star form again. Yep. 
It is. I pick them on every every time I have I'm on FanDuel, I pick them. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. So what do we have next on the docket here, guys, after this injury report? All right. So next thing up we have is um, the Trailblazers winning streak coming to an end by Houston. Houston has given them their loss. Damian Lillard has been going off for I don't even know how many games. I think they were up to like 11 or 12. Damian Lillard and uh, McCollum doing really, really good. And it's funny you say that they were doing really amazing during the win streak because if I'm not mistaken, that was the game that they finally uh, cooled off on. I know that Damian Lillard was struggling through three quarters. I watched uh, you know, from 80% long of that game, and he, he couldn't hit his outside shots for once. It was really strange to see. You know, it was a really fight to the finish. I saw the hurt in Damian Lillard's eyes when they lost that game, not even by a lot. I think it was by, like, what? Four. Four. Yeah, Four not points. even a lot. 115 so really to 111 bad. final score. And Damian Lillard, uncharacteristically, was 5 of 17 from the floor, 0 of 7 from downtown. And mind you, it was a four-point game majority of the fourth quarter, guys. So mm-hmm. when your best star player can be 0 of 7 from downtown and, and CJ McCollum was 0 of 5 shooting 4 of 15 from the field, and this team was still almost beat them. What does that tell us here, guys? Exactly. Exactly. So this, the, you know, I love when no one can say, okay, it's predictable. I know who's going to take it for the East and the West. Because right now, I don't have no damn idea. So I like it when it's unpredictable because it's it makes it exciting. Yeah, if I had to, you know, I could speculate all day. But I, I couldn't put money on it any team right now i want to say that i still think the golden state warriors are like by far the most talented but there's too many role players acting like superstars on these teams you got rookie of the year i mean rookie of the year candidates even giving you know legends a hard time day in and day out the utah jazz was on the craziest winning streak before the the rockets and the the trailblazers went off and and nobody was paying attention to i mean look at this against the rockets Harkless, 17 points, 5 of 5 from downtown. Mo Harkless, uh, Al Farouk Aminu, 22 points, 8 rebounds, 7 11 from the field. Nurkic, all right, learn his name. That is probably the most talented all around, all around center wise, with the Marcus Cousins being hurt. This guy, Nurkic, just gets busy. Only Embiid is really, I know Nurkic's numbers aren't going to support what I'm saying right now, but if you watch the games, he doesn't even have to impact it with, with you know, putting it through the net that much. But in this game, he was 9 of 10 from the field, and uh, he had 21 and 11 with some assists and four blocks to go along with it. So he's playing like crazy Nurkic. defense. Don't, yeah. don't, be, don't be upset when, you know, my Spurs get Kawhi Leonard back and uh, upset everybody and uh, hold up that trophy. Trust me, Speaking, Kawhi Leonard's not returning. It's it's. Speaking of injury reports, that's the rockiest injury report of all because you don't really have many teams where a superstar player is deemed healthy and arguing to not play basketball with them. This is all, you know... This is all, you know, a buildup. They know what they're doing. You're right. But again, like I said, you know, you know when you feel good. A doctor could tell you, you're good, you're ready to go. But if you still, day in, day out, you're living with uh, whatever's going on with you and you feel the pain and you're not ready, you know, we can't say anything different. We can't, Agreed. you know, we can't say you're 100% healthy if the doctor's saying it. Half these doctors don't even know nothing. I should be my own doctor sometimes. For real. They'd be Agreed. like, they'd be like, you're a strong man. Go ahead out there, tap you on the oh, ass. Not to hop, by the way, but James Harden was unbelievable in that same game, and he he dropped forty two and uh, was yeah, crazy threes. James Harden has definitely stepped up this year, exceeded my expectations. I always thought that he was immature. He wasn't going to be able to lead his team into, a, and I don't know why I thought that. Maybe just because of the way he is and the way he played, I was just thought he was not mature enough to lead a yeah, team. Yeah, his his personality definitely comes across a little immature on the court. Yeah, at times. but this year has definitely changed my mind. That team is definitely going to be a hard team to beat. With the addition of Chris Paul, I mean, Chris Paul is just in his element. I feel like he's comfortable. He's like you know, he, Chris Paul's actually doing pretty good at this point. I would say Harden is better than LeBron James. 
because if you switch LeBron James to the Rockets, he'll ask to trade everybody. In case y'all have not, you are trying yet. to get our comments blown <laughs> up here. In man. case y'all and have not realized yet, Matic hates LeBron, I don't and hate I don't LeBron. know why. I respect LeBron. You know, when they say when Le- one day LeBron will not be playing, you know, I'll be, you know, I just have to ask it'll you. Be, it'll be sad. Think, but do you think do you think James Harden plays a, a one quarter of the defense LeBron James does? Okay, but do you think how they say LeBron James makes everybody better? I can name like five to uh, five guys on the Rockets that James Harden makes better. Ariza, I mean, Tucker, um, Abamute. Um, let, me, let me ask you a question. Capella, besides, besides Kevin Love, LeBron. Who, who, besides Kevin Love, when the team started this year, minus Kyrie, and they had Isaiah Thomas and a bunch of other people that are now, you know, Jay Crowder. Who do you think who that was actually starting? Okay. Who do you think was so excellent that is clearly good someplace else that LeBron was doing a disservice to? Well, come on. As much as you hate Isaiah Thomas, he's been getting 20-plus points in the majority of his game. Play. Uh, 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 uh. Number two, Jay Crowder's M- majority? doing really good. Ma- wait, wait, majority? Because I I'll- saw Isaiah Thomas's first five games. I saw his numbers. He had one okay. good game out of his first five. Okay, he- but they came out and said the uh... – um, the whole time that he was playing with the Cavs, he had four 20 point, point games. He already surpassed that with the Lakers, and it was, you know, not even a. I mean, listen, if a team is going to let you dribble around, you know, and blow mad games, eventually you're going to come through <laughs> and win a couple. I okay, saw Isaiah on. Thomas lose. Set, I mean, guys, in okay, the but you but didn't tag they say the okay, in the beginning of the Thomas season they said in the beginning the of the season they said LeBron's out. locked in. He's gonna be, you know, in the conference finals. And then I just asked you they seen how the shitty people. they were. Then everybody's changing their mind. Oh, oh he's out. not gonna be so, there. Then so the first Jay Crowder two games after the trade, they're like, oh, they're back in the contention. But when you really see it right now. You know, the Rockets will spank the shit out of the Cavs. But time out. But time I don't even out. want to argue. LeBron is going to make you eat all these words in the playoffs, brother. I hope so. But time out. Come I on, can't guys. wait to see him go out in the first round to Detroit. You know me. I like bringing up <laughs> relevant and, and, and facts. So hold yeah. on a second. Let me go back. When did, um, when did, um, all right, hold on. That must have been another game. When did he come? When did uh, Isaiah Thomas come on to the Lakers? Do you remember a date? Had it have been sometime February, in February? The trade deadline. February. Okay, so that was against the Mavericks. 12th, I thought. Before the Mavericks. The Thunder. No, yeah, I think I that was his first game. The Mavericks? I think exactly. that was his first Okay. I think perfect. that was his first game. So on the Mavericks, his first game, Isaiah Thomas scored 22 points. Don't Not just tell me the points. He took 10 million shots. No, let's do the points. LeBron the shoots 100 times. His it's terrible field. No, no. LeBron has a way better field goal. Compare field goal percentage. Great, but he shoots 40. It's 50%. Just, you can shoot well, 100, saying, but make 50, and you still be saying that exactly, he has a 50%. Exactly what, no, there's. They, that's exactly what Russell Westbrook did. He shot a million times to make 44 something. And I tell you, he's, he's nowhere near. Listen, he's not an elite scorer. I tell people Listen, this every day. Let's talk about is, stats real quick. Isaiah's first is he on steroids? game. Isaiah's first game, he had 22 points. First of all, he played 31 minutes, 22 points, six assists, and one rebound. That was his first game playing. I need his. I need his field goal percentage. Pelicans his points alone don't just tell you the story. Pelicans. He played five minutes, scored three points. Five minutes, scored three points. Three, all right, five, five, five minutes. minutes. Why is he not playing if he's so good? He's the next game he paid. He's he comes off the bench, so it's not like he's a starting line. Not in the starting starting. He's not starting. So the next game, let's see against the Mavericks, he scored seventeen. After that, he played against the Kings. He scored. Let me see. Uh, seventeen again, and then after that, he played against the Hawks. His, scored, his field goal percentage is so bad. He scored I'm, 13. <laughs> but let's not talk about field goal percentage because you're not that type of guy, Phil. You're you know you are. We're all that type of guy. If you're taking 21 shots and you make five you're, and you got 19 points, but what you're if, not good. If, if you, if you, he, he, he's the losing game, these you games the game for the team. Winning, if you miss the whole game and the game-winning shot, 
I'll take it, right? But you're not that but, type of guy. But he's though. doing you the opposite. You told me yourself. It's not about points. But if he's making the points, then he's contributing to winning this game. And with his turnovers as well, too. Three turnovers, five turnovers, okay. seven turnovers, five I turnovers. Up, I don't want to bring up Lonzo Ball. Listen. Okay? Listen, I don't want to bring he, him up. La- Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, Thomas against I already the, told these guys. Listen, Who Isaiah Thomas the against. Him losing the games for the Lakers. He lost three games in a row. Final two minutes. Isaiah Guess Thomas what? giving the ball to the other Guess team and what? taking terrible shots. With double team. Brown, Guess him. what? If Lonzo Ball made any shot, probably wouldn't have lost those games. And I've seen LeBron lose games this year. Listen, Isaiah we, Thomas. We got away from the original not playing defense. So hard body. But he's the, the best player in the world. Was, that LeBron Isaiah James, Thomas has 29 points he scored against the Spur, against the Heat. 29 points, six assists, four rebounds. He had finally a good game. No, he's After been having double the digits. The same way that Lonzo had his one good game against the Spurs. No, but he has double digits every time he plays. This is what I don't understand and why you don't like him. Like, oh, he has he yeah. has points to the game. After you're, you're, that, he played against the Spurs and got 21 points. Okay. Seven assists. On six of 16 shooting. I mean, it's not terrible. Oh, my goodness gracious. Then, then the next He's night... contributing to the score, right? So when you're in a game, the, the deciding factor of your game is who has more points on the scoreboard. Is it your team or my team? So if hey, you're hey, contributing listen, to the if you points. Think, if you think the next night him going one of nine from downtown was excellent and gives them a better chance. What do you? The, the, what the next you night, the you next said night. San Antonio, he's had 21. And then the next night against Portland, he went one of nine from downtown. I'm just, listen, I'm just reading along with you. You know what I mean? But he still has, what, he got points in the paint too. If, if he's still scoring those high numbers uh, yeah, and double yeah. digits. I mean, I mean, You're right. So it doesn't 19. matter whether you, I don't. For he, had, one, he had 19 that Spurs, night. Yeah. He had 19. Spurs, he played against the Blazers. And he had, let me see, are you, are you 19. Not <laughs> and Ball had 10 and two assists. Like, come on. give You keep bringing up Lonzo Ball. We were because talking about LeBron James. Because you're the type of guy who tells me, but clutch, Phil, please. You told me it's not all about the points. It's about rebounds. It's about assists, too. But then you're Whoa. not even giving Isaiah Thomas credit when he's doing double digits in his games and getting a number of assists. I'm not You're, saying all you want to bring up is field goal percentage when Lonzo can't even shoot an open three. Listen, I'm not saying that he is not good. I'm saying that you you're overrating up. the talent that LeBron had on the roster. I this didn't guy, say that. You're saying, did he do them a disservice? Yes, because if 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 Isaiah Thomas would go to the Lakers and get all these points and all these assists then yes, LeBron James did him a disservice. And Jay Crowder's on Utah yeah. doing a hell of a job too. So yes, the LeBron Jay Crowder did a disservice. <laughs> All right, oh, watch these guys. Who has LeBron Jay Crowder this year. No, I, I want. I just. I think they're all uh, exaggerating everything to the listeners. Jay Crowder is not having no crazy year in Utah. I didn't he say had, he was having he a had crazy four, year. Having a better he had year four nights the, yeah, right? where he was visible on the court, so everybody wants to pat him on the back because we noticed oh him for goodness. once. We got to look up the stats. I'm sure he's doing better with the Jazz than he was with the Cavs, but how does that happen when the greatest player of all time makes all these people better? Listen, or is LeBron he just James, trying to get the stats himself? 35 oh, you're right. 17, you're right. Larry Nance Jr. didn't ball. have career. You're right. Larry Nance Jr. He didn't had have one career game, highs. One you're, game. You're right. Just like Nancy. Lonzo had, just like Lonzo had the one game, and just no, like D'Angelo Russell was, had a good his quarter. Stats, his stats were going up every game, and then they started him, and he had a career high the first night. How many times the Lakers started Larry Nance Jr.? I'll well, wait. He, and, where, well, and, what, and, what and what happened? And what happened to him? He disappeared. Well, oh, he you see, while. he's hurt after now. He, after he, he signed the injured? autograph, is, is the man is the man the injured right now? Is he After injured he right now? Yes boy, or no? And good for him because he didn't sign that boy's autograph. Well, autograph. Remember, <laughs> Nance Jr. was hurt, and that's why Kuzma had a name for himself because Larry Nance Jr. was hurt, and Kuzma was starting. Larry and everyone's Nance Jr. Like, was not play hurt. Larry Nance. He was hurt all year. That's what you're he trying to tell me. For a, not all year. He was hurt for a while because Kuzma was for him for a while. It wasn't even the majority of the time he was there because he got traded in freaking February. 
let's look at the, the first three started. and a half. October. Okay, three months of an NBA season. Let's look at it. And then he has career high with LeBron James the first night they start him. I wonder if LeBron makes nobody better. Jordan one Clarkson. One game, Phil. One game. No, Listen, Dan how many games? Player. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You wanna, you're saying one one game, but Larry are you Nance pulling up? Good. Are you pulling LeBron. up the stats of the other guys the rest of the games? You're not pulling up the stats. You're just what talking. What stats did you want me to pull up? No, Maddox is over here saying one game, like LeBron didn't have nobody else score over 20 on all these games they won. Whoa. You think Jordan where, Clarkson? Where have you seen with the eye test that he helped has, anybody get better? But what has anything to People what? like Clarkson, so, George I didn't Hill, watch the game last night, but if I watched Rodney his Hood 35, doing... he had 17 assists last night, guys. What do you, you think he didn't make anybody better? He's an ice Before he holds the ball, just yes. like everybody before, was saying. Before Kevin the ball, Love. He Hold holds on. the ball Before just Kevin like everybody was saying. That's shot. why he traded his boy back to, to the Heat because he couldn't take I'm just, the Heat. I'm just going backwards in time. Before LeBron got the game-winning assist to Kevin Love, a wide-open three, the previous game, he had the game-winning assist to Jordan Clarkson on a game-winning three. I'm just going and recently all the players time. on his team, right? But you can't make an argument that he makes anybody better. Kevin Love was uh, probably better on, on the Timberwolves. But listen, uh, you know, all we're these guys that he gets were better – off being without LeBron, and, we're just and then they okay. fucked up their careers getting with them. If we're that's, just talking if, two recent okay. games, and in both games, Kevin Love has been there. So you know, it could very well just be Kevin Love being around. They so won plenty not, of games. You know, they beat a lot of teams before Kevin Love came back. Uh, I'm they just... were deteriorating as well. And I remember in a conversation we had in a podcast, we, you know, I said, you know, I was excited for them when they first came back before the break. You know, they won Boston and all this stuff, but I don't know what the heck happened. They've been losing. They lost against the 76ers. Like, come on. 76ers um, are doing good, but seriously, you lo you're losing against the 76ers? Again, I don't think that stat watching alone tells a story. We have to look at the fact that they lose a lot of close games that they're in. And I do think it says they're not good enough, but it doesn't mean that, you know, LeBron doesn't have them competing at a higher level. I think that we just said how much better the Eastern Conference is. So let's not contradict ourselves and act like they're not going up against teams with Joel Embiid, you know, Ben Simmons. No, and, and but then I think you contradict yourself because you say what disservice did he, what the people that were traded, what disservice did they do, but they're doing good on the teams that they're on. They weren't doing good on the Cavs. I think time exactly. will tell that my point is perfectly accurate because Jay Crowder is not even going to average 10 points a game. For we're, the not rest doing, of the year. we're not oh, doing, we're not doing God. time will tell. We're doing what time the heck out. is happening. Time out. He's been and happy. what has happened. He's All right. Been you're that's, gonna what look at five that's what sports games. stats is. What has happened? These guys, it's called that's being a prisoner of the moment. It's called being no. a prisoner of the moment. No. Anybody no, can have a the whole week. year. That's where you chalk it up to every time. And I hate when you chalk it up to a prisoner of the moment. Because I'm telling you right now, I was just looking at stats for Jerry Crowder. And he he um, uh, he he's, gets double digits. He's, so what are you talking about? Listen, in, in he, Boston, we all he, did not average, he did not average 15 or 20, you know, no 15 know, to 20 a game. And this is so, a disservice that LeBron did to him. No, Let no, me, no. No, before LeBron... In Boston, he did not average high scoring. He had so why did games. everybody say LeBron won the the the, the uh, they won the the trade? They got Crowder. And do we I ever say, agree with that? They traded him the next the next. Wait, wait, week. wait. Did we? Did me and you ever agree with that? Did you tell the public? Did we no. ever agree that? Okay, so but so name one I don't guy know okay, who okay, should I be said. flourishing, such as Clarkston. Uh, Rodney Hood and George Hill. These are good players. Okay, but can I just what has he quick? has he you know made a good? Can I, I just come made... in real quick? Okay, come on. Let me just come in real quick because I'm gonna go back like I did for Isaiah Thomas, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tell you every game and how many points Crowder has won since starting with the Jazz. All right, first game he played as a Jazz player was against the Trailblazers. He got, he scored 15 points, three assists, five rebounds. Wow. That was the first game. The next game was against the Spurs. He scored 15, 14 points, one assist, three rebounds. The next game he played against the Suns. He scored 15 points, two assists, seven rebounds. 
The game after that, he played against the Trailblazers again. He scored 11 points, two rebounds. So for you to say that he's not even going to average 10 when he's been averaging more than that is ludicrous. The next game he played against the Mavericks. He, He got 11 points, one rebound, three assists. The game after the Mavericks, he played against the Rockets. I'm not going to think he did so, that. So I undersold him by two points. I thought he was going to average eight. He's going to average 11. Then he got 12 points against the Rockets. Five, five so assists. Why, why and are six these rebounds. guys doing better without LeBron? And that's exactly what I'm saying. You're saying that LeBron didn't do a disservice, and I feel like he did because they're doing better on the other teams. Why All right, they you have guys, so many problems? Jay why Crowder is so. LeBron was holding the ball in so, stat pattern. All right, Jay Crowder is so amazing now that he's not with LeBron. No Clearly, one is guys. saying you, you he's amazing. Stats. No you one's saying stats. he's amazing. You, the question was, did he do a disservice to them? Yes. I don't think those stats prove that LeBron did a disservice to him. I'm they sorry. weren't getting those points. They weren't getting those stats as a Cavs. As a Cavs. He took, he took plenty. Yo, y'all can Google the wide open bricks that Jay Crowder was laying in Cleveland. And if you want to blame it on LeBron, go ahead. Kyrie didn't need yeah, anybody to blame to make it on the, the shot for him. The best player takes the blame. Okay. All right. If we're going to blame him for other people missing, it's his fault. But the question you heard it here first, he guys. It's, it's LeBron James' fault that Jay Crowder laid bricks when he was wide open in Cleveland. And Kyrie got traded to a random team, and they were number one for almost the whole time. What is that? I don't think that has much to do with LeBron being. And LeBron's the best player in the world. I mean, Best listen. Player in the world, he fabricates his teams. He trades ten men in one day. Did so you did you make better? the case that did you make Shouldn't the case that Isaiah better? Thomas was did you make the case that Isaiah Thomas was sabotaging the Cavs while he was playing intentionally? Did you make that case? Yes, um, because they really don't like each other. Him and LeBron does do not like each other. Prior okay. to him even so, getting on the Cavs, but team, but but didn't so you, the starter uh, didn't you say on that the he team, was on you his just, contract you made the year? Case was sabotaging. I'm just, I'm just, I asked y'all a question. We all made the Would case. Would somebody do that on their contract year? Oh my God. You, we made the case together though. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, no, but, but what did we not that? already what make the case? What are you saying? Case? Make what case? What are you saying? Did we make the case that Isaiah Thomas was intentionally saying and doing things to fuck the team up all year? He was saying exactly how he felt because he was tired of the nonsense of LeBron, just like Tyron lose out right now because oh LeBron James is the problem to this all. We, we're re- we we're also definitely did say, rewriting we also the did narrative say, right now. It's fine. We're not. We're not because Isaiah Thomas was doing all that because he was not happy on the team. I'm 100%, 1,000% sure I've said that. That's the reason why he was saying all that. He's not happy on the team. He doesn't want to play with LeBron. He's mad he got Why did Kyrie Boston. leave? Come on. He's mad he got traded from Boston. He did not want to be on the Cavs. He did not want to get Who would traded. want to leave the best player in the world? Come on. It's not only a, see, it's not only about the wanting to leave the best player in the world. It's not the about self-proclaimed that. best player. I'm the best in the world. Man, I, I hear you guys, you know, dumping all over LeBron. I don't know. No, um, I don't. I'm not dumping on LeBron. Maddox hates LeBron. It's plain and simple. If you said that he makes nobody better, that, too. Y'all think huh? LeBron James, y'all both think LeBron James elevates no one's ele- uh, level of I didn't of play. say that. We didn't say anyone. We were just speaking Name about. one guy we were just speaking about other Crowder than the one game Thomas. that Larry Nance had. We were just speaking about Crowder and Thomas, not everyone as a whole. Well, Maddox and you are not making the same point. Maddox doesn't think LeBron James makes anyone better. And he said when, he said when in his career has LeBron done it? He took no, a bunch of I no- said this year. This year. Oh, so previous year. years he's made people better. I don't. I, I wouldn't say so, but I would. You know, this year I'm making the argument: who has he made better? Because everyone keeps saying he makes everybody better. I, I haven't seen it. That's what I said. think. This year is the is the harder case to, to make that he's making people better. I think he's had teams that he went to the finals with that nobody else in NBA history would. Was he on steroids then? Oh my! Here we go. Listen, uh, hey, listen, uh, so, I thought we were, like we said, the conversation was uh, uh, speaking about Thomas year. And, and Crowder. And you said, yeah. what disservice did they did he do for them? And I put the stats and I I already gave you. my take on those stats. I don't think that they disprove really anything. His 11 points that he's setting up to average for in fucking Utah does but not. But you just, 
but see how you how you but then you said I just, prior I to me said I was out off. his facts. I said I was said off. he's not even gonna average, but I, he's averaging. You're you're repeating. I already admitted for the uh, the you know listeners that and I was. And he off was by good on the Celtics. And he was good on the Celtics. The Celtics uh, were number one last year. They were good because of things that you don't value, like defense and rebounding. That's what he Here was. Here we great go. At. When you okay. feel attacked, when you feel attacked, I guess the insults, the insults, and the attacks. I'm, are I'm quoting it's you. Fine. It's fine. I'm not throwing any it's insults. Fine. I'm quote. I'm qu I quoting you. Just you. said I never said defense never doesn't care to me. You're saying that that's how I am. No, I never whenever I bring that. it up in other arguments, you make it useless no, so that's no. what I'm saying. Oh. it's it's only about lonzo ball that me and you bump heads about because you think this guy is the next michael jordan or something no and i'm trying Who's... to explain to you that you talk about people's field goal percentages but you don't say nothing about lonzo ball not making any points all you're focused on I... lonzo ball is his assist his rebounds and no. he's the defender that makes everyone better when i'm telling you we haven't seen him on the foul line once when i'm telling you that Isaiah Thomas is making all these points, and you're coming up to me saying, oh, "I want to look at the field goals. I want to see how many shots he has to make to do I, this." But I you're not saying Isaiah nothing about Thomas, Lonzo. I know Isaiah Thomas is a selfish, high volume shooter. Me and Maddox sent a string of text messages back and forth, multiple games in a row, about his terrible decision making. Am I lying, Maddox? What? Nah. Uh, okay, listen. I'm down not the in stretch. Your group chat. I'm not in your group chat. What I'm telling you is, I just spit all his numbers and how many points he has. Matic was go, there. I will go and verse them against Lonzo, and they will not be the same. Not even by the by. Not listen, even a Isaiah is a Isaiah is a better shooter than Lonzo. But again, if you take shitty quality shots, Jr. Smith style, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, no!" And then it why do you think he took? Do you think he takes shitty shots? Because I'm confused right now. No, no, uh, Isaiah Thomas. He takes. He, he, he oh takes. My God. Yeah. He was chucking you. up. He was chucking up shit. Yes. Because okay. you know that he's coming back off the injury, and he's trying to find. You know, he's. So dumb. I don't know what games y'all watch because when I watch Isaiah Thomas, when he first came I to the Lakers, when he first came to the Lakers, he was going in. He couldn't. You, you know, he was just throwing shit up now? in the air. Can we talk about now? Because people evolve, and that was back in February, and we we're about to be in freaking April. Listen, so we're still in March. Talk. We're and it wasn't be, over March first. It wasn't the bad shots. Be, this the is bad crazy. shots were not over March 1st. That's all I'm saying. But he's doing better now. I'm happy for the guy. We all talked about him getting better as time went on. We I don't think him on trash. FanDuel, and he gets me a lot of points. And, yeah. and this is from you saying, look at the fantasy points, blah, blah, yeah. blah. I'm telling you that obviously Isaiah Thomas does not suck if he's getting me all these numbers on FanDuel. Okay. If Isaiah, I didn't say that he's trash. I'm just telling you that LeBron James, I don't know. <laughs> If the situation that happened the first half of this year, it looked like LeBron wasn't trying hard at times and that he was pacing himself. It looked like Isaiah Thomas was trying to fuck things up on purpose. And it looked like J.R. Smith was on the coldest of coldest runs. You know what I'm saying? And then Kevin he's still Love was injured. And he's still. So J.R. Smith has I mean. been in a winter the wonderland. Only hot, the only How much of that is LeBron to was James' the fault? How much the of that hot, is LeBron? The only hottest thing J.R. has been next to is the suit. Listen, how, that's funny. <laughs> how much how much of that is LeBron James' fault? Listen, if you want to say that it's not LeBron James' fault for how people play as far as their shooting and how many shoots shots they make, fine. I can agree with no. that. But when we're saying that LeBron's attitude is contagious and it affects the team, then that's how he's that that's how he's at fault. Because if he's not promoting positivity positivity and and helping people with their shots and telling them you know you're good being that team player then that's going to make the team negative and that's why they lose so if, that's if what you, he's at fault if you asked seti osman tristan thompson jordan clarkson larry nance and like george hill and two more people about lebron james what do you think they're going to say about him these are people i mean like know. honestly not these for the people, camera no. not these for the are, camera exactly. These are Not people for the who camera. are if, they, if you had playing. the honest players, what do you think they would say? 
but these what do you think people, Kyrie would say? But these, Answer that. But these are people, forget Kyrie for a second. You're just name people who newly got with LeBron. So have you ever been to a job where you're working and people are being really nice at first? And then as you start working, you find out really what goes on behind closed doors and the job okay. really sucks. Point, point proven. Exactly and then you're getting traded point, the next day and getting sent point home proven. to Miami so Heat. You think, so you think Jay Crowder. Your best friend sent like, you to Miami Heat. So you think like Jay Crowder blames LeBron James for his subpar numbers the first half of the year? You yes, think? it came out after he left. They were all Where? talking shit about LeBron. I, I, I'll send it to you. Yeah, no, I, I need to see that. I don't know. He's like, we all play with a team now. You know, they were all dissing LeBron in their post game. Throwing season. subs? They was throwing subs? Yeah. Listen. And remember when they were on the team, people were saying he's holding the ball. They're having a team meeting. He's pat. He, he's stat padding. He's holding the they ball. They had a team meeting, but I thought he was there. I thought he was there for the team meeting. No, he was. He was there, and they were saying that you know, I think this is why everybody got traded, and people weren't holding their tongues. I don't know. We. This is the whole conspiracy of what happened to the Cavs this year that we really you know could always get back to because I really. I mean, listen. There's it's a Dwayne very Wade possible. conspiracy that I want to get into it's, as well. It's very possible that LeBron James is his ego and managing as GM and coach and everything has finally gotten out of control. I'm not trying to say that he, for a fact, has made people better this year. That's not even the argument I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make the argument that from the evidence that we currently have, I think it's hard to say that these group of players, we only named two. It's a it's a 12 man roster here. These group of players, right? To say for a fact, we know they're way better, maybe a little, but to say, oh, they're way better than what we saw from them in Cleveland, and that the difference is strictly LeBron James's responsibility, you know, his fault alone. I think we don't have enough evidence to say all of that. Do you guys think I'm crazy for thinking that? So you don't think LeBron was the purpose of these guys getting traded and Tyron Lue taking the time off? LeBron I think he definitely, is not the issue of this team. I think and why because... Kyrie wanted to leave. All right. I think that it's possible and, and likely that LeBron gave up on these guys, but it was for a multitude of reasons. Jay Crowder is not an offensive specialist. Isaiah Thomas was sabotaging on purpose. You know, it didn't seem to fit for the team. You know, they lost 12 of 18 for crying out loud. So I think it was a basketball decision. Not so much, oh, LeBron was just being a whiny, whatever, whatever. Now, he could have also been just crying like we've suspected and speculated about how they run every front office decision past this guy now because he's been so much of a crybaby. But um, with that being said, does that data still tell us, you know, the guy that was the first to all this rebounds, points, and assists, combinations he's the first to all of these milestones you know what i mean has okay, he let me never ask you this. has he let me never ask you made people and he's better. the first guy and he's the first guy to score 40 on onto the kumbo so easily and you know uh he's not on steroids i want to hear okay. i want to hear airheads uh question yes because i'm gonna i'm gonna point out a few things okay jay crowder there's a video i saw it a fan was heckling lebron Jay Crowder was sitting next to LeBron. Jay Crowder was cracking up as LeBron was arguing with the fan. What happened to Jay Crowder? Traded. Le uh, what's his name? Isaiah Thomas was talking crap about LeBron James while he was still in Boston. So this is taking even back a step further. Isaiah Thomas talking crap about LeBron. He's no Kobe. He's no Michael Jordan. He's no this. He's no that. These ain't the monsters. All this crap, right? Then he gets traded to Cleveland, and you think that he's going to really want to be on this team. So what happened there? He was traded off the bat. Now look, Tyron Lue and him are arguing. Don't Who's off the... Who's off the team now? Tyron Lue. And let me ask you this, Clutch Phil. When have you ever, in the whole Cleveland Cavalier this year's team, when have you ever seen Tyron Lue speak in a huddle? Um, I thought I saw it, you know, a couple of timeouts. Because <laughs> mm, I'm pretty sure I see LeBron doing all the talking every time there's a timeout. I must say that I, I do have more pictures in my mind of LeBron James leading the huddle than I do of Tyron Lue. 
Okay. So when we say here that LeBron definitely is at fault as far as the attitude or the atmosphere that he's bringing around these certain people, because I, I, I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, if someone's talking negative about me and then I have to be around them, I'm not going to change you know, my stance on that person, you do me wrong once, that's it, we're done. So if that's how LeBron is, or if that's how Isaiah Thomas is, he's not fake, he's going to talk about who I would, whatever he's going to say, and he's not going to eat it, then that relationship is not going to work. And then you have Jay Crowder, who's there, who probably gets influenced by Isaiah because he was on Isaiah's team. So he's cool with them. So now they're kind of like a brotherhood and they stick together and they're both not cool with LeBron. That relationship's not going to work. So was Isaiah Thomas, first of all, Isaiah Thomas was off the hook. All these guys and get some young guys who hadn't had no taste of the playoffs, except for George Hill. And, um, you know, so he can get the respect back of the team. But then now he's doing this to Tyron Lou, and you know, now you got this I, new squad again, that you're doing this with as well. When is this ever I think, gonna stop? I don't think that I, I I could say that you guys are wrong. You know, I'm just saying that it's a it's a consideration that you know it might have been a whole as a whole a team issue because the team lost a lot with Kyrie being out. I mean, gone, and then Kevin Love getting hurt. Um, I don't think the broken hand was even his first injury this season, if I remember correct. So, you know, that that takes away a lot of uh, star power from this team from last year. And no other team in the Eastern Conference could recover and come out the gates the same exact way without adding players of a high caliber when you lose two players of that magnitude in one run. You know what I'm saying? If LeBron got traded to the Celtics like Kyrie did, or if he got traded for Harden, would he be happy with those teams or would he be crying to trade all the rookies for veterans? You know, he. I don't think LeBron would be unhappy with, with Chris Paul and, and, and Capella is a young, hungry guy and, you know, <laughs> Eric Gordon playing like six man of the year. They all, they all look pretty hungry. I don't know what, on, what LeBron bro. could complain about over there. Come on, bro. I mean, but then again, it goes back to, you know, I'm asking you now, Maddox. If you think that LeBron is the coach and makes all the decisions, why would he want Isaiah Thomas and Jay Crowder? Why would, why would, why would he? Mm-hmm. If he makes all the decisions? Mm-hmm. So if he has problems with these people, right? He knows that they talk about him and all this stuff. Why would he even want them on the team? Word. Why would that they trade the for them? Pack- that was the best package they can get at the time. Oh, well, yeah, because they, they had to give up Kyrie. Isaiah Thomas, Crowder, and a first-round draft pick, which is, you know, can go to get anybody, you know. That's they couldn't a... have picked anyone else? You don't think LeBron could have picked Harford? You don't think LeBron no. could have picked anyone else from that team? I don't team? know. They needed well, a point guard. Well, I think got I... A defensive, and then they got a defensive guy who they thought I would think be, you know, good. Isaiah Thomas had the highest trade value, and that's why they went for him because they knew they weren't going to keep who they were taking. You got to remember, Kyrie had them by the balls and was saying, demanding a trade. Sure they wanted to stick it to Kyrie and give it to a team, give him to a team that was outside of the teams that he was saying he was okay with, which is exactly what they did. And um, you know, I think they had to just take the highest trade value that they could get knowing that these were going to be pieces they were just going to try to move again as soon as they could and supposedly you know the original trade was to try to get eric bledsoe and paul george somehow for Kyrie in a three-team trade and that fell through yeah so that's why i think Kyrie just wanted out of there so they can't just you know he's he wasn't i don't know I, there's a lot of reasons why i think Kyrie left and yeah, you and uh, you know, you know, you have some clutch takes and stats to match with that. I think that uh, you know, it's going to be hard cuz Kyrie always cited it to one thing and having, you know, this desire to be the alpha and not have his career and legacy be overshadowed by somebody else. But when we add up everything else in hindsight, that lo- sounds like smoke and mirrors to me today and you you know, you convince me that there's more on the surface. I just I don't know exactly what, man, because Kyrie's answer never made sense to me. But at the same time right now, I'm thinking to myself, okay, Kyrie led LeBron's LeBron's team. The Cavaliers, the year they won the title, Kyrie was the leading NBA 
playoff scorer. He was averaging 29 a game up until the day the finals started. If my memory doesn't fail me, double check that. And, um, and you know, to be able to do that on a LeBron James team, clearly you have freedom. I know he talked about being overshadowed, but who took the game? Who had the ball when the finals game seven was tied up in the final minute? Kyrie Irving did. You know what I mean? He put the so, dagger. Yeah, like the realest the moment. Shot heard that, around all around the world. Exactly. You know what? You can't. You can't pay for shit like that. Like you just can't. And so, so that's why, like, it didn't really make sense to me. So I gotta be with you, Maddie. Ultimately, I know I said that we don't know for certain that it is LeBron's fault, but there's so much that sounds messy with this shit that I have to be on your side and say, it probably is something. I'm just playing on LeBron's side. I'm just playing devil's advocate here because we of don't course. know for sure. And I feel like he gets blamed for people missing wide open shots. I'm saying maybe Kyrie didn't want to like playing the way LeBron wanted to play, you know, like, you know, like it, it, that's what I think I mean, it is. He's, but he was leading the NBA in scoring in the playoffs. What way was restricting Kyrie? You know what I mean? That's what didn't make sense to me. Like Kyrie had the green light and he, you know, he had assists. It wasn't high, but you know, they did what they, what they were trying to do. I don't know, man. Or there's a big, you know, wormhole. You know what I mean? It feels like something's missing there. But at the same time, we know that Kyrie was not happy. But if they didn't try to trade him, would he have ever made a claim to leave? You're right. Because the thing did come out saying that he was on the chopping block. So he said, fine, then I want to be traded. He came out first with it. But then again, you know, why would they want to trade him? Because LeBron was upset that he was getting all the shine come final season because Le- Kyrie know, was I, getting a lot of shine during the final season. Everybody was saying it was because of Kyrie they won. So LeBron might be a jealous type Attention. Too. He just wants the attention on himself. And, you know, I you know, I don't want to sit here saying I get it, but that's just the way LeBron is. I think LeBron is his own worst critic, and I feel like LeBron has to – feels that he has to go hard every time and that he needs to be that number one person because he's working towards a legacy that he wants to build and what he wants to be better than this one and that one. So when he feels that that legacy is going to be threatened, yes, I feel like he's probably definitely the reason why well, Kyrie – Well, I, I said that, you know, Kyrie – led the NBA in scoring up until the finals intentionally because LeBron James, even though Kyrie had the game-winning shot and he had a lot of freedom and green light, I think LeBron James was, like, the first player ever. To, what did he average? Like, 40, 10, and 9 or some crazy shit. He almost averaged a triple-double with 40 points in the yeah. finals. Yeah. But that's what he I think had, was the last draw. He had the best finals on record by a single I think, guy. I think – I think he was just stat padding in the finals. Okay, That's why but, Kyrie don't didn't want to be there as well. But let's bring it back. I mean, just because he got 40 points, he's not consistent with that. If we look at, and this was just posted, I don't know, what, what nine hours ago. Who's the GOAT, right? Out of three people, Michael Jordan won 173 40-point games. Kobe Bryant won 122 40-point games. And LeBron James with 59. So please, let's not keep saying he's a, you know, 40, 40 points. And it, I get it. Well, Good for him. He gets 40 points. He gets me a lot of FanDuel points. But he's not in the double. He's not in the hundreds of 40-point games. That's because he, uh, I think, I think he has almost double the assists per game than those guys do. Okay. And they say that he's holding the ball. Stat padding. So wait, you really think his whole career, this is what he's been doing? Like, that's what I mean. Think like, you don't think that he hates. knows how to do that shit? Maddox hates LeBron James. You don't, don't think that happened. he knows how to do that shit? Why? I I'm not the person coming out. His own teammates who are playing no. with the guy. You can't I mean, this LeBron is something in it. You, you, LeBron you never. Sucks. Did you it take for a decade? Let me ask you: for his first decade in the NBA, when he was doing this left, right, and center, did you ever hear somebody say this about him? Never. He was dressed. When did he high start school. losing his hair in 08? Oh my goodness! That's when he started taking. Um... It's not gonna happen. Uh, uh... We're not bringing this up. It's not gonna you feel happen. Me? It's not. You see how bad. That's why he's good. Maddox wants getting to turn, stats. Maddox wants to turn up this guy's record any way he can. He's a one. I feel sorry. He's a one man army. I hope LeBron never meets. Anybody him. could do what he does. <laughs> if you take, you know. <laughs> this is crazy. 
I hope if I took performance enhancement because uh, he's in for a real rude awakening. I'm dead. Listen, for the listeners, I just want to say really quick: LeBron James is a playmaker. He, we all know he is one of the sickest passers. Ask Magic Johnson. Ask every ESPN analyst. I've heard recently, very recently, I'm talking in the 15th year of his career about some issues of holding the ball a little bit. But it's it's uh you know from watching the games myself. I don't see LeBron's. The highlights that I just shared on Clutchville NBA last night, 17 assists, no turnover. And that's not the first set of highlights. I shared a LeBron making magnificent basketball plays. Please comment. To check out these videos. Tell me what y'all think because he's a beautiful playmaker majority of the time that I see him setting up anyone else in the NBA. I mean, the guy went between the legs of his own teammate. He was on a level he didn't even know he was aware of. You know what I mean? So yeah, a lot of that stuff happens if you you know get a little boost here and there. Yeah, I hear you. So if uh you know, I don't think nothing you take makes you you know more accurate um or anything like that. Um, it may make you you know have a better performance and your body no. feel better. But ultimately, you have to go out there and you have to have the basketball IQ and the timing and the rhythm of so you, knowing. So you t- so you think if somebody's taking an, an enhancement. It's fair to the other guy who's not taking anything. No, no, I, I definitely don't. I'm not making the case that enhancements would be fair. All I'm making the case for is that LeBron is an excellent passer because we were talking about, you know, Airhead Commentator made a very good point about the GOATs and the level of high performance games that they have for their career. LeBron is at 15 years and he doesn't even have half the 40 point games of MJ or Kobe. I'm not even trying to play devil's advocate. I do think that LeBron creates more for his teammates. I mean, Kobe was 10 years working on his fourth ring and people were still saying he doesn't know how to make his teammates, you know, how to properly pass the ball. He loves to chuck. He doesn't fully trust his teammates. This is, you know, nobody would debate that that was his reputation for a long time, right? And he has how many rings and how many does LeBron have? Okay. Um, I don't think that disproves whether he was a good passer or not. Boy, that's what I'm bringing the okay, point. Okay, but who wants to choose a passer over somebody who's going to score the ball? Whoa, whoa. So now LeBron, <laughs> do you know LeBron never averaged less than 20 points a game? He's never not scored the basketball. He okay, let LeBron. me mark this better. Who? I've read so many things that says LeBron James has no heart. Mm? Let me elaborate. Basically, well, closing. He, he won't. He won't close the game. He won't closing. He's I've seen him lose. A... I've seen him lose games, and uh, I've seen him back. lose. I've seen him miss free throws. But this goes back to me saying and, uh, that he's his worst. Just critic. give up on himself when he when he Whoa. you know at the end of the game. He's his worst critic. He doesn't want to be the reason. He doesn't want to be the reason in the news why he lost the game winning shot. So that's he what he doesn't want. want that. He You'll does not that want that over somebody right. who's an you assassin. You see how he is when he loses a game. Assassin, like Michael I don't think or Kobe Bryant. When he loses a game, he doesn't even shake the opponent's hand. I mean, I he goes straight guys, to the locker room. I and think if he wins. He's watch. hugging, and I think you guys should watch the, the the second half of the last three finals and the second half of every one of LeBron James' playoff games the last five years. And I think you'll feel differently about his closing. Majority of that reputation was established in the first half of his career. He was deflecting late in game a little too often. And I think that most people would agree that he's done a lot more late in game. Who closed the game for him, game seven, for his championship in, in in Cleveland? Kyrie. Kyrie Irving did. Who okay. got the what? What I mean, Kobe Bryant or uh, Michael no. Jordan? I know Jordan passed the curve, but I'm just saying. But why do you, do you understand? LeBron? Do you understand that Kyrie's shot would not matter if LeBron didn't make what everybody dubbed the block of the the chase down half court block of the year on a guaranteed layup to seal the game? Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, so to say he has no heart. And that he gives up and quits, and you want to bring up that play, but not the play before the game-winning shot that made it matter. He's the reason why his forty and whatever we said he was averaging the crazy numbers, his blocks, yeah. 
his assists, his rebounds, every possession. You feel me? Um, yeah. That chase down block. How could we say that man? You you say that's a quitting performance? No, I say that's a man who got shot in the butt before the game. <laughs> <laughs> He hates I'm him. It's a, win, it's a no win. It's a no win conversation about LeBron him, James. But you it, know, it definitely is. There's a lot no of conspiracies combo. with LeBron James. I can't with this guy. Listen, I love you, but at the same time, listen. You don't think when he was very young, you made the case about Miami and stuff. You don't think when LeBron scored 29 straight points against the Detroit Pistons to go to his first NBA Finals in his fourth NBA year. But yeah, 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 fourth. I want to say third for a second. No, his fourth NBA year. And that team was the best defensive team in NBA history the year before that when they yeah. shut down Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal and Karl Malone and Gary Payton in the finals. Then they come back and LeBron James, way before any enhancement timeline, he took over for his no, team and he think, closed out. I think that was 2008. No, it wasn't. That was like 2006 at the or seven, the latest, but it was before Miami. That was before Miami. I don't know what when he started losing hair. That's when we'll know when anything started clicking. OK, in. we're not we're not diving into to those okay. details. We're talking okay. about his score. His his uh his scoring and closing out games. That's what I was bringing that up for. <laughs> no problem. Oh my, he okay, Clutch Phil. You know he's dying and itching to just bring this up. We might as well yes. give him his one minute of talking about it, and that's it. I'm not even gonna comment think, on it because I don't agree I think, with it at all. I think we should make it a structured topic and reintroduce it. You know, on a different platform exactly. or in a different. You know, when we so have a little bit more. So please stop bringing up his hair loss then, because I don't want to hear about it one more time. Okay, okay copy that. As a matter Very of fact, nice. was there any topics that we didn't cover? Because you know we're famous for getting in the rabbit holes. I what, know. Uh, Let's see. Nope. Right. I mean, the, the only really thing is just, um, no, I think we hit everything. Tyron leaving, Kevin Love returning, Ata Dekumo talking about LeBron um, being, you know, the only one really to cover him. Will the Cavs make it to the playoffs? Probably, but they won't make it to the finals. That's my take. Uh, Trailblazers <laughs> losing to Houston. Warrior, will the Warriors make the finals with their leading lineup out? I mean, we didn't talk about that. I mean, we did kind of say in the injury report that everybody's out, and it could tie into them just finding loopholes around the NBA rule of you can't rest your players and everything. So supposedly everyone is hurt, and they're all resting for the playoffs because they already clinched that seed. So they're already in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. So they very well could be doing that. I mean, that is my team and everything. And I would hope that they're not doing that because I'm getting mad that they keep losing and everything. But, you know, uh, you know, who knows? If the playoffs started right now and everybody was healthy and everybody was back on their teams, of course, not Cousins. He won't be back because that, you know, or, or Gordon Hayward. But who do you guys see in the finals right now? It's hard to tell because there's just so many good game, good teams playing right now. Yeah, call, it is a tough call, but I'm gonna call the Spurs. With everybody, okay, go ahead, Spurs. The and. Spurs versus. I want to say somehow the Celtics are gonna get in, in get in there. Yo, Matic is on a planet nine. If he thinks the Spurs is gonna be on the finals for the West, Spurs versus Celtics. You, you are bugging. You are bugging. Same. You know, leaving Kyrie. Kyrie? Uh, okay, we're talking about the West real quick. Spurs? Spurs the Spurs for yes. the finals? If Kawhi Leonard comes back. Can we planned. just say that Kawhi Leonard is not coming back no, this year? I said and if I'm everybody's telling you right healthy, now, he's supposed to be coming back. No, it wouldn't be the Spurs, brother. If Kawhi Leonard came back, the Spurs are spanking people. Guys, can y'all comment how crazy this guy is, please? Thank you. I can't be Kawhi the only one who thinks that. And I'll you know. Be- Come on. I be- I know exactly why you feel that way because we know what that team was in position to do before uh Kawhi got hurt. Um you know, and we know the type of player Kawhi is. Then we see LaMarcus Aldridge having a crazier year. Um these young guys, DeJounte Murray, Kyle Anderson, crazy years. They still got Patty Mills, Danny Green, Tony Parker, Ginobili. They they got Pau Gasol and Rudy Gay. They have a really great roster, and they still have what a lot of people think is the best coach in basketball. So I don't think you're crazy for making the case that you are. The thing that I think me and Eric commentated why we can't put much stock into it is because 
we both don't think, you know, Ka Kawhi has really not given good feedback on the team this year as far as looking like he wants to actually play for them. Why do you, are you so sure that he wants to play for them as much trouble as he's fighting, even though their doctors are saying that he's healthy? Because it's all about the game plan. It's all about, this is all playing. This is pre-playing. You think this is part of the Spurs plan? I wanted to stick it to the NBA because they didn't do anything about Kawhi getting hurt that time. So he sat him out for the whole year. I mean, you think, you know, I understand that the Spurs uh, were a nine seed a week ago. You think that Greg Popovich would, you know, take a chance and watch his team fall like this in very tight standings and risk, you know, everything, you know. Especially versus, he's, a, he's a smart man. Especially versus what they did last year. Compared he's a to smart what man. And if they can stay uh, on top of the West in the top eight, and you add Kawhi Leonard, who's a secret weapon, while everyone so, else is tired, this man's going to play like Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant. Well, Kawhi is going to end up proving, you know, one way or another what the what it is. We're going to know for a fact. He either is going to come back, and if he's healthy and this is part of their plan, no way they don't give him any regular season action and try to literally whip him in shape live in the playoffs. No way they do that. If this is a secret weapon plan, they got to bring him back at some point. Relatively what, if, soon. what if, like I said, he's been healthy three months ago? Bro, you need NBA speed play. No one in NBA history has said you what can come back. What if he's scrimmaging? They have guys that play. He said he's been playing three on three and five on five with guys that they have in the practice facility who aren't even okay. NBA players. So Maddox, Maddox theory is that Kawhi has been high level training. This mm -hmm. possibly this entire time and is on superstar level and already conditioned for the playoffs. So you think they would bring him back day one for with the playoffs? With the experience? No, they're going to put him in like five to seven games right before the playoffs. I think we're about to hit the 10 game mark right soon. Soon. Everybody. I think we're in the teens. We're either about 20. No, yeah, I think we're less than 20 games left. So that'll I'm be. Not sure. If they if he's good money and he's been playing, ten games, seven games, you know. Okay. I think so that means he's got to come but back soon. Popovich did say he's not coming. He doesn't see him coming back, but it's gonna be a surprise if he does. And if he does, mark my words, the Spurs will be holding up that trophy. No, they won't. All right, I'm sorry well, to say this. Know. Even if Kawhi Leonard comes back, the rest of his team's been playing all year. They're tired. <sighs> come on. And that's my point. But then you that's all they need is one healthy MVP caliber player. No. Well, wait a minute. Everybody's been playing all year, you know. So. No, Kyrie, ha Ka Kawhi Leonard has not been playing all year. No, no, no. You said his team. You said like the Spurs. Right. Every, They've every... been playing all year. All right. And yes, I know. The but then you. And the, I know. And the... But then you're gonna have this one player come back, and you think that he's gonna be the one to take the whole thing. He's bugging. The rest of them have been playing well. They they only lose by a little bit when they lose. Yes, I saw them lose against the Lakers. Got veterans and young players who are putting it, who are holding their own. Okay, Maddox, you could dream. You're a dreamer. It's not going to be the Spurs for the yeah. West. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna burst his bubble because I respect the way all those names on the roster are balling, and I think they have another level in them that we haven't seen yet because Kawhi hasn't been on the court, but. I don't know why Kawhi is not playing for these guys, and it seems a little messy. It seems like the trust factor on both sides, the way Greg Popovich is talking and the way they're representing Kawhi doesn't seem, like, positive. You know what I mean? It's so unpredictable it, that you got critics saying that, you know, they should trade Kawhi Leonard. Like a that's signing exactly. Trade. Exactly. That's how bad things look to a lot of people on the outside. I'm not that far gone, but I'm just saying – it doesn't seem like the plan exactly what you're talking about. But I guess if you wanted to throw everybody else off, you're going to make it look as bad as you can, right? So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. And, and why they say he's going to show up on Thursday and, you know, oh, he's not going to play Friday. And, you know, it's like a day-to-day -day type of thing, you know? Yeah, it's true. You you make You make a good argument. But, again, you could easily see it going the other way. If Kawhi don't come back, 
And what if he gets a second opinion and he's not actually 100%? What if the story is legit? You're right. It's, it's crazy. But if he wins, if, if if what I say actually happens, I think I deserve, you know, a spot on Revolt TV. Or oh, oh, we're going to have to revisit this and, and tweet about it all day nonstop if you're right. Maddox got you heard not. it first. He's not. He's not. We just guys. said what if. We just said I'm just, you know, I'm supporting the man. You know what I mean? He's I making know, a prediction but... here. But I'm more of a realist, so just knock them down when they need to be knocked down is not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. You're trying to make sure he doesn't get his hopes up too high. Yes, because if you think that the Houston Rockets, who've been, I really think the Houston's going to take it for the West. Like, if you think that the Houston Rockets are going to get beat by the Spurs, even if Kawhi Leonard comes back, you are out of your little mind. Wait till you see James Harden wheezing like he did last time. I'm I'm afraid. I think this is a I'm afraid of the Spurs. I'm afraid of the Spurs defensively. They had the best Warriors team that I ever saw in my life, shooting the ball, looking like they didn't know where to turn for a moment, and then Kawhi's leg went down, and then everything changed. So, what other know, what other team can you really see poised in the playoffs, uh, not afraid of the moment, and just playing basketball, you know, at the purest form, other than the Spurs? I mean, you know, they play good ball, but there's a lot of high-level teams. The Spurs lost to a lot of people. I think the Houston Rockets are – people are high on the Rockets, but when it comes down to it, did we see Harden last year? That's last year. His last game in the playoffs? So you think – Because, like, at the beginning of this podcast, I said James Harden to me was immature, but now I feel he's progressing. He's mature enough to lead his team to a win. Yeah, Maddox Maddox thinks Harden's better than LeBron. So how could he say now that he he thinks he's the same as last year? You think Harden is better than LeBron? Yeah, but LeBron's going to be out of gas. Maddox said it in this episode. How could you think? You saying as an overall player, Harden right Harden, now. If I were to pick a team, I'm I'm picking Harden first because okay. he's gonna get me to the free throw line. To sure he's gonna hit the that. fucking free throw shots. He's gonna uh not put not not stop putting pressure on the other team. I just wanted to make sure he clarified that he doesn't think that James Harden is better as a, better than LeBron as a whole. He just thinks he's better than him right now. Okay, I could agree with that. But not, I mean, not 100% agree when, when you say right now, what does right now mean? Like today if, or this if, season? If I were to take them from when they were babies and, and when they first came in, I'm taking Harden. You seen what he was doing with, with OKC? So that's the whole that's career. That, yeah, that's the whole career. Now you're really bugging. This man's not on, on performance, you know? But, but, but tell me well, how many... I can't. This has I'm not surprised. This is... Um, Aaron, this is the same man that just said LeBron never made anybody better is what he thinks. So, of course, he's going to make this argument. I can't. I cannot deal with this. this But how could you say Harden is better than LeBron's whole career after knowing how many... First of all, James Harden doesn't even have a ring. James Harden doesn't even have not one ring. What is said and done? We'll see what everybody does. James Harden does not have a ring. James Harden has not even broken as many records as LeBron James. But James Harden's not even in the talks of a being Listen, a goat. You can't feed into Maddox. Uh, this is a bait wormholes that he wants us to, to dive has in Has LeBron on, right? James been an MVP candidate these past three years? Has, first yes. of all... First Just because all, people want to put him in there, right? Just because he's LeBron no, he James? he gets votes. He gets he's LeBron James. But come on, seriously? LeBron James. You hate him, bro. <laughs> Listen, uh, we can say that no one in the whole NBA history has ever been unanimously unanimously voted as MVP. Curry, right? Yeah. He was the first one in the whole NBA history to be unanimously um, chosen as MVP. But that doesn't make him a GOAT. That doesn't make him better than Michael Jordan. That doesn't make him better than Kobe Bryant. Exactly. Because they stole Kobe Bryant. Steve Nash stole two of them, which Kobe Bryant should have been the thing. Mm-hmm. Both those times when Steve Nash won. I mean, listen, you know, we could debate about individual awards and who, you know, could have got these. At the same time, I think, you know, LeBron's stats alone uh, show that he's had a better run and his record and his playoff record than James Harden, you know, For with sure. his teams. Um, I think sure. I think that you don't really believe when you want to you want to tell our viewers, you don't want to, you know, as go on record saying that you would take every, you know, James Harden's career over LeBron James's. Bro, he dude. said you, it. 
He said it. At I'm least trying to get on my back track. I'm trying to save my bro here. You know what I mean? I don't want the fans to think he's you like. Heard, you heard I least. said at least. You heard what I said. I said at least he didn't lose in the finals. When I'm just playing. Lose the finals. <sighs> Listen, so, I. Harden lost finals against LeBron. He was an OKC. With the Rockets, right? I mean, with um, Thunder. OKC, yeah. So what are you talking about? Oh, he's shit. Still, he's still better than LeBron's. Oh, my goodness gracious. LeBron has a losing average this year. We'll see what happens. I mean, James Harden is 0-1 in the finals, and he <laughs> chokes um in game sixes, you know, against the Spurs when he's already. But if scoring. he wins this. Here, he'll have a better average than LeBron. I'm going to tell you right now that if James Harden the finals. chokes this year, I'm really going to be upset. Well, listen, mm-hmm. I think James Harden is electric. I just think that James Harden don't play a lick of defense and doesn't do as much for that side of the ball in his, you know, in 25 just because, years. Just because of this conversation, I hope Harden does his thing this year and shuts, you know, and, and actually faces LeBron and puts him, you know, puts him to sleep. Has, he, have, have him gasping for air. If Harden makes it out the West, I'll already give him the credit. You know what I mean? For saying that. How that can he that. not? He has such a solid team. Chris Paul is playing at high level. I mean, Chris Paul was good on the Clippers, but Chris Paul is being really good this year. You have Capella who's being good. You have James Harden who didn't even have to play almost half the game the other night. He's sitting down rooting everybody on. You have all these players, Tucker. You have um, Ariza. I mean, if he flakes, I'm going to whoop his ass for so, everyone on that team. So you think that... Um, and don't get me wrong, I buy in on those role players. I, I draft them on FanDuel. You know, I think Eric Gordon is a shoe in for a sixth man of the year, even though Lou Williams might make it, you second guess it. I think Eric, Eric Gordon still a shoe in for that. But, um, you know, the greatest starting four in NBA history still is in California. And um, that Golden Gate Bridge, um, when Steph and KD alone, are shooting the ball. I don't see a team that can keep up with the Golden State Warriors. They're already amazing defensively. Their bench, Swaggy P, David West, Sean Livingston, um, we could go on. Their bench uh, goes and extends the lead against top Western Conference teams all the time, which is another reason why they can be in games resting four superstar all-stars, not just, you know, one, two, or three, four. They can rest all of them, you know what I'm saying? And still I appreciate, compete. I appreciate your confidence in my team. I t- so, totally appreciate it because I know what my team is capable of. But this year, they have not exceeded my expectations in the gameplay during the regular season. And everyone getting hurt, I I was just going to say, it's the health. I don't feel it's... they'll be 100%. This is I mean, all facade. Durant's going to put them on his back again. No, Durant is not that great of a player. I'm sorry to tell you. I really So don't what care. happened last year? Yeah, I think you missed when the finals in the playoffs. On, his back. They, on the finals. Oh. They didn't feed him the yes, ball. They he did. took advantage of Wait, wait. Durant, do you, you do he realize Durant and Curry, he, there's no other the duos. Longer. You know, nobody else in the NBA can have two players on the same starting five lead, be top ten in the NBA in scoring, Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant. You know that, Steph- right? But please don't – okay, do, are we not in agreement that Kevin Durant was fed the ball last year in the finals? No. He yes, he was. The moment. He was not going to lose. He was not going to lose no. at all. No, he was fed the ball. Wait a he minute. Do you, the that's what real The same reason – real same reason Kyrie got the shot. The same and reason Kyrie the got the shot was the real same reason that KD got the ball. It's because – Real champions go rise to the moment, right? No, you go, no, you go with the hot hand, but KD was rising to the moment, and that's exactly. why they went with him. He brought, the, he brought her home to his mama. No. I don't think she remembers the defense that KD was playing on top of. Please, like, of course I remember the defense. Defense, okay, defense. I'm talking about the shots. When you're shooting, that's not defense. That's offense. He, he, led, so the team in, he led the team in scoring. We already know he's the nastiest shooting the ball. No, he's not. So why is it that when people are out, hurt, 
why are when people are out hurt like this season, he's not scoring that well and not winning games. If Kevin Durant was such this great shooter and this and that, no. he would still be winning with Curry. All, out. all all the Warriors have bad records. Like when Clay and Draymond are out, Steph has a bad record. When Steph and Draymond are out, Clay has a bad record. And now when KD is the only one on and the other guys are out, it's you know it's not always going to go picture perfect. KD doesn't have bad numbers in these games though. No, but I still don't think I, I wouldn't rely on Kevin Durant. I think, I think I don't I don't want to say he's overrated. You can't use what What are you using to say that he's you know that he's not? You think he's you know off from what we're saying? He's better than LeBron James. He just like plays, after the year, he plays he plays conservative. After the year, he plays conservative. Yeah, he plays he doesn't the right ball. Do. He plays teamwork. When it comes he, to exactly. the finals. Watch what's gonna happen. He's gonna be MVP again if they win. Yeah, do you would you bet that he couldn't do it again? That's what I want to hear you say. You know, like what do you really think of this guy? If everyone is playing healthy and they feed him the ball, yes, he very well can make all these shots. Okay. Now, please don't you know why would they feed him the ball? Because he has a better the best chance. He has the best chance. So so they don't give the ball. They don't design the, the whole gameplay to the person who's going to give him the best shot of scoring. That's not what every NBA team is doing. Are you going to sit there and tell me that Durant shoots better than Curry? He did in the finals. What? Let's check the numbers. See, I don't know. I don't agree with that. I feel like you feel that way because the ball was fed to him. To okay, me, so you're Curry saying if we gave Steph the shot, Steph could have hit more or, or the same. No. I feel like Curry that. does not show up when when he needs to. Durant fills that void. Okay. Why I'm did gonna, they lose? I'm going to separate my three to from, one from what I've they been lost. saying. They came and back from three to one. They came back from a three to one deficit before, against OKC Without and beat Durant. Kevin Durant. They sent Kevin Durant home when Kevin Durant was up three one against them. Okay. Yeah. But I'm saying. Without Kevin Durant, they and lost the, to the Cavaliers. The they only lost that? because KD exactly. can't. I mean, um, they lost Steph because Draymond Green. They lost because they didn't have somebody to put them over the top like Durant. Because Draymond Green got suspended no. in the fifth game. That's Bro. why they lost against Cleveland that year. We know. It, do, do even we if Draymond went out, Kevin Durant will still make sure they won. Bro, that's because of defense and not because of scoring. You think Stephen Curry, the unanimous MVP that cooked everybody in the league, including LeBron, including KD, for two years straight, he cooked and annihilated everyone. And you yeah, think- in, in the regular season, right? Mm -hmm. No. Well, how do you think won they won that one chip? finals, right? He won that one finals, then Bro, he lost. Did we not both make an argument that there were phantom fouls and they fouled my man Steph out the game in Cleveland games four? Did we both say that the, the NBA kind of rigged that series and that Aisha tweeted about it? Did we not talk about yeah, that already? Of course, of course. Okay, so don't make it sound like you didn't believe already that Steph Curry had things working against him, why they lost the second year. Exactly. Yeah, that was rigged. Okay, okay, so that's why. Steph was fouled out the game in the third quarter. That's why he couldn't go off. The refs robbed him, and the mouthpiece flew out his mouth. He couldn't yeah. control himself. Out his hand. Yeah. Okay. Green got suspended game five. There were so many things. You know, they suspended him after LeBron came out crying and bitching. Yes. Come on. The biggest rigged shit we ever seen in our lives. We talk about it privately all the time. Now we're bringing it to the to the topic for the forum. So don't try to use that to say that's why Steph Curry didn't go off the second time. If I'm not mistaken, he averaged 26, 27 a game the first finals. This goes, and this this goes back to our regular argument where we talk about who is better when it comes down to the moment. And I'm going to say 100% Kevin Durant. Steph Curry is all in great. But when it comes down to the pressure, Kevin Durant shot two right over his eye. Um, Steph and, and dethroned out. and dethroned LeBron James. I, everybody talking about Kevin Durant is the best player the in the world. I understand about the playmaking that Iguodala did and the defense against LeBron that won him the Finals MVP. But if we watch those games, the person filling it up the most in the Warriors' first chip with Stephen Curry on the team was Stephen Curry. And if we want to go back to the facts, no one filled it up more than him the first time. Then the second time, 
he had an off game and they lost game five with Draymond without there. But the facts are still to remain that he filled it up the most. Now you're saying if you take Steph out that situation and put KD there, they would have won the second time. That is that what and you're trying to say? That's exactly yeah. what he's saying, and he's bugging. Of course. Now I don't I don't think that KD without Draymond Green, game five, suspended the same way. I think that we, we could say we don't know what would have happened. Kevin Durant stepped up. What about up six and seven? You know? You still got Kevin Durant there. Okay, so you so you're saying, I mean, listen, it came down to a final shot. If if Steph just hits that three before, you know, so it could have easily went the other way. I think, yeah, it stands to your point that he wasn't clutch. And and when the game when the finals came down to it, he missed the shot, right? So that's the definition of not being clutch. But um I think if he gets another shot at it, which he didn't really have to like take game winning shots because KD was on fire. Like we said, they were feeding the beast. And listen, and, it's and, not, and they gave them they gave them game five, right? They gave them game five or game four to to get a game five because they would have sw- they would have swept them, right? Oh, oh, you're talking about um, giving Cavs game, yeah. yeah. They gave him a gentleman sweep, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't, you know, LeBron, you know, this is going to be bad for him. Can you have, please, we'll give you an extra million dollars bonus if you if you give him um, a game. I love it. I love these guys. This guy's takes, man. Because the it's NBA stuff. was losing so much money because they got their ass spanked. Yeah, they, they needed a couple more games. That was, that was too quick for them. So they said, all right, we'll give you one game. All right. Well, you know, we've gotten through a, a good amount of uh, uh, takes here. I uh, I feel like we could debate all night on how this playoffs is going to go. Only time will tell if Steph is going to have the bigger moment, if KD is going to average the most again, if uh, LeBron is going to, you know, prove Maddox wrong and, and make people better for, I guess, the first time this year. And... Uh, you know, that and a whole lot more questions. But if I had to tell you guys what you're hearing first, Minnesota Timberwolves, look out for them in the Western Conference. Um, they're beating a lot of teams without Jimmy Butler still. And in the Eastern Conference, um, you know, there's nobody I expect to come out more than the Washington Wizards. And that's only because of how injured Boston is and that I just think LeBron's reign has to end at some point. He is the amazing all-around guy that Maddox doesn't want to give him the credit for being for right now. But uh, at the same time, the East is just stacked, and the chemistry— going to be the best playoffs ever. You don't get finals chemistry overnight. That's right, and I'll do it for this edition, Episode 9. Yep. Internet Undefeated Podcast. You got me, Airhead Commentator. You got Matic and Clutchville signing off. Thanks for listening. And undefeated.